Hello, class. How are you this morning? Yes, yes, that's good to know you've been shedding all night, haven't you? Do I have an adolescent now? Do I have an adolescent in the house? What's that all about? All right, guys, it was quite an interesting day. With work, I'm sort of back on the road for the first time in over a year. And we're inching closer and closer to normalcy, how it used to be. And uh, the idea is to shoot videos and things always hit when I'm on the road. I actually had a co-worker today. It was inter it just I love how this stuff kind of comes together sometimes, right? The co-worker that we have is a new hire, and uh, the person is the same age as my son. And while talking today, I found out that um, the mother of this person is actually the quite a bit younger than me, same age as my wife, <laughs> which kind of blew my mind. And it put a lot of things in perspective. Put that on top of some get, grabbing some traveling music, and I ended up getting this CD that a friend of mine made back in, oh my gosh, 1994 maybe, you know, uh, right when mixtapes for us in this area were sort of zoning out because people were able to burn CDs and things, and the songs on here are just fantastic. And there's a song by uh, Public Image Limited, for you guys who know music, that's uh, Johnny Rotten's band, uh, one of his bands, after Sex Pistols broke up, a song called Rise. In that song, he says that anger is an energy. <laughs> So it made me think about how, uh, you know, getting older a little bit, which is a good thing. And I think about how uh, angry I was. David Byrne with the Talking Heads is a song where he said when he, when years ago he was an angry young man, he pretended to be a billboard standing tall and he fell in love with a beautiful highway. And I'm sort of taking all this stuff and uh it's one more thing that comics helped with uh, because i sort of can look back and realize that yeah i was an angry young man and you have that energy uh of, of youth the confidence of youth of uh you, you you feel immortal when you can take on the world and do anything and it's just one more thing that I realized how much trouble I could have gotten into back then <laughs> if I didn't have hobbies and things to uh, keep me from having those idle hands, if you will. The uh, struggle with money when you're young and everything like that, where you keep doing things and you focus. And I had the hustle going on with these things. I mean, aren't those, weren't those wonderful days? And maybe you're in them now where you had a choice of, man, do I pay the electric bill or I'll go out to Good Time Charlie's and watch a Kiss tribute band in a seedy little bar. You, know? <laughs> you have all your friends piled up uh, in your apartment because everybody stayed too late and you're the hangout and everybody wakes up at six in the morning, goes through their pockets and you find out you have enough money for everybody to drive about three hours to Carowinds in North Carolina just to make a day of it out of the pot money in your hands. Good times. So I've got a haul here to show. And uh, tell you what, man, it's been a very, um, I'm a lucky guy. I'm a lucky guy. Real fruit, real, uh, ended up getting a lot of stuff. Some of the stuff I may have already shown before, but uh, I had a good day. I had a good day on the road listening to music and reminiscing and thinking and uh, just feeling normal. So I'm like, we're going to shoot a real video. Okay. So Ollie's that I always talk about the outlet store two or three years ago, probably three years ago now, I think they bought something like $13 million of um, trades and hardbacks and all sorts of things from DC Comics, you know, and they always get things from uh, Marvel also. The Marvel stuff doesn't really get as big a discount, and I always leave the uh, I always leave the the price tags on at least long enough to show my haul, right? And uh, got quite a few things from the Ollie over the last month here. Um, actually, I'll be honest. Today, I stopped for three ninety nine. Whoop whoop three ninety nine. There we go. 
I ended up getting the last trade of uh, the Swamp Thing series, um, probably volume two. Uh, ended with Mark Miller, Phil Hester, and Kim DeMolder, a little Kurt Swan in there, Phantom Stranger, Hellblazer, everybody pops up. And this reprints of uh, issues 161 to 171, the last 10 issues. And I have those sporadically. I have all the Alan Moore stuff and sporadic stuff from Volume 1 with Bernie Wrightston and everything. But uh tell you what, man, uh, what a way to go out. You know, when was this, the 90s? 95, 96? And I remember a lot of this stuff like it was yesterday. One of the... One of the original series that uh, Alan Moore really took to new heights, uh, recommended reading, should be required reading, ended up uh, losing the stamp of a comics code approval for the newsstand, and then eventually became one of the first Vertigo titles out there. So that was really cool to find. Now this is sort of funny, because this is one of the rare occasions that I know more about the book and the comic than I do about what's inside the comic. And these trades are actually worth about $50 to $55 a piece still. So there's two of them I don't know about opening. I, I want to get in there and read this stuff. I think there's seven that DC put out starting in 2005. But it's Wally Wood's Thunder Agents, right? Um, a book that came out in the 60s by Wally Wood. He had a lot of people working on it, like Dan Atkins, Chick Stone, George Tuska, Al Williamson... And it's, it's, it's superheroes of the 60s, James Bond influence, man from uncle kind of stuff, right? And uh, I'm picking these up for $8.99, right? There's only like 20 actual issues of the Thunder Agents. Uh, and then assorted, uh, I don't know if they, what they were called back then, miniseries with, uh, or little, you know, one shots, whatever they were. Um, after I get in here, I'll know of dynamo and no man or, or stuff like that but uh it's just amazes they've tried to bring it back a few times dc came close to putting them in to the dc universe and killed off a bunch of characters and uh, revamped them a little bit and they, they and there's been more than one attempt to bring you know to revive them but it just amazes me how 20 issues uh and assorted issues around that um have just survived and gotten this archive publishing in there. I think there's seven of these. So now I have three that I've got for about $9 a piece as they come out at Ollie's. Um, who knows if there's more out there. But it's just, like I said, it just amazes me. I know more about the book than I know about what's in the book. So, fun stuff, man. Um, let me look around here. Okay. One more thing I got at Ollie's, and this was the last one. Uh, this thing has probably been at Ollie's at least for a year. I didn't get it, and that was a mistake because this is really a fantastic little read. It's a hardback, right? Uh, original price looks like 18 pounds. That's amazing. I don't know what that's about, but uh, you know. But uh, anyway, I got this for seven dollars. It was the last one, hardback. It's the Justice League, the ultimate guy. And I sort of snicker at these when Marvel and DC put these out. You know what I mean? But this one is very thorough and very cool. It's full of timelines. Different eras of the Justice League are explored with their villains. Right, let's see if we can get... Uh, I'll work with me. we got the fantastic dark side shot here. They're villains. And it goes through the Silver Age League. Uh, some of the greatest hits and greatest crossovers. Uh, you know, it goes, you know, the Justice League Detroit. It goes through the satellite years, the mountain years, the watchtower years, um, and all sorts of things that go with that. Uh, my favorite that they have in here, my favorite section, of course, is the Keith Giffen, J.M. DeMantis, uh, Justice League, Justice League International, Justice League America, Justice League Europe years. Um, and, and things like that. It's just fantastic. It's just a fun read. It goes through some of their villains, you know, that were League exclusive, if you will. Uh, even talks about Justice League Detroit. Goes through the indices. Fun stuff. Great stuff. If you run across it, you'll get a hit, pretty good history of the Justice League there, which is, you know, all right. Um, I think that leads, goes to the Amazon, if you will. Uh, fantastic Four. I think I have shown this before, but I love these epic collections that have been coming out of different series and stuff. 
and I know of no better way to get these. I, I've said, I've told the story before. I was moving out of Roanoke, Virginia, loading the U-Haul by myself, and probably about two boxes got stolen off the U-Haul. And wouldn't you know it, it was my Jack Kirby stuff, Marvel Jack Kirby stuff that got taken, and a lot of my Hulk, Incredible Hulk stuff, right? So this was great to have. Got it right off of Amazon, a little bit of a discount. Um, and I'm probably going to try to get the whole Jack Kirby Stan Lee run this way. Uh, this one, of course, goes through Fantastic Four 68 to 87 uh, with annual number 6 and some not brand X stuff that was Fantastic Four related. So uh, I can't, I mean, it used to be titled The World's Greatest Comic and at a point it was, you know, and it to me really stands the test of time. There's stuff in here that just makes me fall in love with Kirby all over again. I sort of wished I'd marked it, but there's this great shot of Dr. Doom that uh, Jack Kirby did that was a profile um, that just makes me fall in love with Kirby over and over. Of course, there's this classic shot of him that I've seen quite a bit, but there's also one where it's a full-page profile of him. You really get to see how he played with the mask and stuff. Um, the man was phenomenal. Gosh, you know. Um, we've got a few stacks here. We're going to take a break from the comics and go over this, but Stopped at a Goodwill, and I actually do read novels and short stories and stuff, and I do veer towards the science fiction. Have for years, a little bit of fantasy here and there. But for a dollar on these paperbacks, there's these collections you can get of the year's best science fiction stories. Here's the 30th year they've done it. Um, and I left one in the living room that has a story, I think called, uh, and then God clapped, I believe, that my friends who... Unfortunately, when it comes to my circle of friends, it's less and less people who actually read, if you will, you know, or have the physical books. But there for a while, there was a short story, I think, that was called And Then God Clapped. So I have it marked, and I've already started it in the in the other room. Uh, here's another paperback that was a dollar. I love how I know I love how they're like uh, they they try to sell this with more than three hundred thousand words of fantasy fiction, right? So the, the, this is the uh, 31st annual collection that they have. I have them going all the way back that I picked up at libraries and stuff, uh, getting these sets and stuff, man. But this is one of my favorite covers ever. I mean, it's a little bit of science fiction, a little steampunk, reminiscent of Starman in my eyes, uh, the Jack Knight Starman with a, that's not a monkey, that's a little alien. So that's just, I love some of these covers. It's fantastic. And then the hardbacks were two bucks. I left two or three of them. Maybe they'll be there if I get back. Uh, it was the first time I've been to a Goodwill in probably a year that I can think of. Um, but this is the 25th annual uh, one. So that's, that's some hardcore reading there. I'm set for a while. Okay. Uh, some of the stuff's from eBay. It's not quite in order, but I went ahead and got these. I used to laugh at people. Back in the day when they couldn't sleep, there'd be infomercials on TV at 3 in the morning. Or they'd be on QVC, and they'd be homesick, or whatever the reason was. They would order the, the silliest stuff on impulse, you know what I mean, because they were home. And then I had insomnia last week, where I actually ended up missing a day of work, because I did not sleep. I was not going to survive. And I played around, and I found these Defiant Comics um, signed by Jim Shooter. Hopefully it's real. I haven't verified the signatures. But I'm a huge Defiant Comics fan. And this actually makes all the issues. I have all the issues of this dead universe, if you will. There's a whole history of with Defiant Comics. And it's quite easy to get everything that they publish. There's one or two things that might be a little pricey. But uh, this was the last issue I needed. It was a zero issue. Uh, the Great Grimmix that ties into the Warriors of Plasma, if you will. And I didn't know that it was a Heroes. It came with an old magazine in the 90s called Heroes uh, bagged inside of it. So yeah, uh, I made deals. I made an offer on these. I got these much cheaper than what the guy was wanting. He had some more. But I needed to upgrade my War Dancer because it got damaged with the way I packed it in a box. And then I just needed this one. This was the last issue. They also have uh, an issue, a comic called Glory. Um, that has maybe four or five, eight pages or something that you can download. There's a way to download it uh, legally online. They give it to you, and I have those on my phone. So maybe one day I'll hit a library. I don't want to use up my ink. 
uh, on our printer. Uh, but maybe I'll stop at a library when things continue to inch towards normal and I'll go in and just print them off and maybe I'll just staple them together and make up a cover for them. Um, what else? I think I showed these already, but who knows. But a couple months ago, uh, I did the purge of over a year ago, right before uh, we all got quarantined. I went ahead and went through a bunch of my books and was going to sell them off uh, at a flea market or something, maybe a little local con. Couldn't do it. Had one of my friends come over and they went through my boxes and they bought this entire set that I hold in my hands. And after sitting there thinking about it, uh, I went ahead and got on eBay and found the whole set. Uh, bought them back. But it's Ruse by uh, CrossGen uh, Comics. Or a little bit of Sherlock Holmes adventure with uh, his, uh, I don't know what we would call her, his partner here. His, his idea of Watson, if you will. Uh, it's not Sherlock Holmes, but it's a take on it, okay? By Mark Wade and the great artist Butch Geist. That's one of the reasons I want to get this. But she has uh, some sort of, uh, she could read minds or something. You know, uh, it, it's cross-gen. I think Jared Osborne told me that uh, the publisher demanded that it tied in with having superpowers and the cross-gen symbol. So they pandered to him, gave it, and then it faded away and just sort of turned into this Victorian era. Sherlock, I have not read this thing in probably 20 years, so it's time for a reread. But I got the first 12 issues um, for a really good deal on eBay. Everybody's going after these One Division uh, uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier books right now. Uh, Omega Red's first appearance and things. So while they're doing that, I'm kind of skimming in behind and grabbing other things while people don't want it. Uh, now, another thing I did on the same night that I was doing the eBay thing and got silly with it, you know what I mean? Impulse buying it late at night. Uh, Instagram, there's a comic book community on Instagram that's been there, and I didn't quite realize how active it was because people do claim auctions and things like that. And I think I got this off of a dude named Comics Attic, and I got to tell you, I got it quick, and it was painless. I got it mailed to me. It was mailed quite, you know, really well. So I took a chance, and for $10, I got this off of, uh, Comic Addicts off of uh, my first claim auction on Instagram, of all places. It's the first printing of From Hell, uh, I think from 1991, uh, for, you know, 15,000 copies of a small press book back then, right? And From Hell, of course, is Alan Moore's story of who he thinks Jack the Ripper is with research and annotations and in things. Uh, the movie that came out with Johnny Depp does not do the book justice, but uh, it's really it's really great. So I have a number one of that, and I'm really happy to have it. But it blows my mind that in 1991, 15,000, um, a, a print run of 15,000 was considered very small when I think a lot of modern books are struggling to even meet that in sales, if you will, real sales to people. Uh, that's a whole other video. Okay, what else did I get? Oh, man, I've already put them up, I think. Man, well, that's what we get there. Hmm, wonder if they're close by, and I just don't realize it. Anyway, I ended up getting West Coast Avengers number 61, if you will. Um, 60, I think 61 to 62 or something. Uh, maybe they'll pop up in here. Maybe I'm just not seeing things correctly. <laughs> I better have another stack of books somewhere, and it's probably like right here in distance. Anyway, but I uh, ended up buying these two issues um, just to check them out. They were like maybe a buck a piece. I've had friends recommend Mr. Monster. This is from Eclipse Comics, one issue, and one issue from Tundra. Uh, by Michael T. Gilbert. Now, I love this pulpy cover. This feels like something out of Charlton Comics in the 70s. All right. Gold Key, Dale in the 60s. But whatever Mr. Monster is about, I'm about to find out. I've never read anything about Mr. Monster. Don't know anything about Mr. Monster. But, um, you know, it's been highly recommended. So there you go. So I hit an antique shop Sunday. We went out, got out of the house. Went and had a little lunch, got some stuff for the Bearded Dragon at a Petco, and I stopped at an antique shop, played around. And the person who actually owned this um, lot, that you, you know, his section of the antique shop, 
was there restocking and I was able to talk him way down on this book, which was fantastic. But I got this fantastic four number 62. Uh, if you actually use price guides and not eBay for a price guide, it's probably a $90 book and the shape it's in, I want to say $60. I got it for way lower than that. Could not pass it up, and it's in fantastic shape, I think, uh, for a book that's closer to 60 years than 50, you know, so, <laughs> fantastic, number 62, a little Silver Surfer and Blast Star, I got these for a buck a piece, this is a second print of Immortal Hulk, number 18, I figured it was there, I'll check it out, I've read approximately three or four issues of Immortal Hulk in a tiny little um, trade that I got at Ollie's for like three dollars um uh, i've been this was there a year ago so i went ahead and get it for it got it for a dollar but this is in the early 80s when they were reprinting books um for people and this is the micronaut story where it's the first appearance of captain universe i always pick this up when i these up when i come across it there was a month or so where the late great darwin cook was was doing widescreen covers for a bunch of comics so i ended up getting the one that he did for grayson i have some other ones floating around captain victory uh, i always pick these up one of uh jack kirby's most underrated series in my opinion from the early 80s um 12 13 issues and a annual sort of a special came out sporadically over a few years and with a wink and a nod he ended up tying captain victory into being part of his fourth world with a wink and a nudge. Ends up, uh, this is the uh, grandson of Darkseid, son of Orion, if you will. Great stuff. Picked up a little Judge Dredd. I always pick up the little classics Judge Dredd. This is, probably, I believe, from uh, 80s, early 90s. I think it's the late 80s. Uh, classic Judge Dredd stories from 2000 AD. And this is probably my third or fourth copy of this. I'm a huge Legion fan. But I always pick up this cover. I think it's by Ernie Colon. One of the Colons. I'm pretty sure it's Ernie. Oh, no. Excuse me. Stacy Keach, 1987. But anyway, this is from 1988 when the Legion was celebrating its 30th anniversary. And now that we're in 2021, we're way... This, this, this is older than what their anniversary was at the time. And I've always loved this cover. It's fantastic stuff. So I'm sitting here thinking... I had those West Coast Avengers over there, but I've got the West Coast Avengers. And I got them at a pretty good price. And I didn't get them because they were hot. I had the West Coast Avengers Vision Quest run um, since it came out. There's a Cavern of Chaos episode where I whipped it out before they became super hot. Before they unveiled the White Vision on the show. And everybody wants West Coast Avengers number 45, I think, now. You know, and a few other issues. I had those. But I got them because I was like, you know, John Byrne left and never really finished that story. So if I want to finish the story, it's time to get them, right? So maybe I'll show those in another video. But I think that's what I have laying around here. Everybody be excellent to each other. Thanks for tuning in.